since I'm kind of getting into the introduction of the clone stamp, let's push this idea even further and really explore it. I'm going to go to file and open in the same folder as number four, tonal adjustment. And we have a couple of changes we want to make on this photo. Okay, so I've got a top layer called directions. I can turn that off. The first set of directions is take out the wrinkles and the scar. So I'm going to go on my bottom layer, Command J, always, in case I screw this up. And I'm going to zoom in right here. It's a little scar right there. So small little spot. So I'm going to take my spot healing brush and just kind of go over a couple of these little wrinkles right here. A little scar right there. Take some of those out. There we go. Okay, that looks clean enough. Ugh, I don't want to zoom in on my face like that. Okay, there we go. Good enough for me. Okay, the next uh, set is tone down the red skin tones. So again, if I've got just a minor little change, image menu, adjustments, hue and saturation. This time I'm not using an adjustment layer. I'll just do it permanent basis. Right here is my target adjustment tool. I can target the reds. You can see if I clicked and dragged to the right, it would increase the saturation. Like we look like tomatoes. If I drag to the left, I can tone down that red just a little bit. And I click OK. Pretty minor change, but it helps. Okay, the next one is lighten up the facial area. When we took this photo years ago, 15 years ago, the light was coming straight down on our head. So to keep him from getting any sunburns, we put a big brimmed hat on his face, on his head, which cast his entire face in this dark shadow. Well, I don't want to see him in a dark light. He's much more prettier than me. So I want people to look at his face. Okay. In order to select his head, I go to my channels panel. And you can see right down here at the bottom, I made a selection around his head and I saved it as Jonah's head. So I want to use this channel to re-select his head. So back up on RGB, I go to background copy and I'm going to go to select menu, load selection. As I've shown you before, you got to physically click on this bar and pick the channel, Jonah's head. And I'll click OK. So now we've got a nice selection around that face. All I'm going to do is make a copy of this area by hitting Command J. Okay, you can see on my layers right here, it just duplicated a little copy of the selected area. The unfortunate part is that's another copy of a dark face. Okay, so edit, we'll undo that move. And what I want to do is just use a blending mode. Like as if I had an assistant helping me with my photography who is shining a reflector panel here so we can get the light to come back up. Okay, if I hover over these ones, all the values turn dark. That looks kind of cool right there, but not what I'm looking for. Notice lighten. I want to lighten up his face, but lighten doesn't do anything. It's actually screen mode. That's so stupid. Why wouldn't lighten, lighten up a face? But it doesn't. It's screen mode. Okay. This actually looks too bright. That worked too well. So just always remember, next to your blending modes, you have your opacity. So I could just knock this down a little bit so it looks a little more natural. Not as dark as before, but not so fake either. And that looks good. Okay, the last set of directions is take out the date. So I'm going to zoom in real close on this date. And we do have a lot of detail we got to remove from this photo. The lucky thing for us is the texture. Because we're going to use that texture, that grid pattern to our advantage here. So what I would always recommend is we can turn off our directions. Don't need to see those anymore. I do not photo retouch on my physical photo because 
photo retouching is kind of difficult. You don't want to make mistakes and then find out you got to back up or you ruined your photo because you made too many mistakes. So what I do is I create a blank layer for any photo retouching. And I can double click the name and call that photo retouch. Ing. <laughs> photo retouching. There we go. Okay. With my clone stamp, the only one that's going to work on a lot of details is your clone stamp. If you are cloning, you want a soft edge brush. You're trying to blend pixels together and trick people into believing there never was a date here to begin with. Okay, the other thing that's really important, we are on a blank brand new layer. There's nothing here on this layer. Okay, so in order to use the clone stamp correctly, I have to come up to the upper right and it says sample. Sample from the current layer. The current layer has nothing there. Okay, so what I have to do is even though I'm on a blank layer floating above my photo, I'm going to take my clone stamp and sample from all layers. So even though I'm working up here, I'm going to be picking up pixels from down below. Okay, the next thing you want to keep in mind is you're going to hold your option key for your target and you do not want to option click right underneath the number. See, I'm looking at this line right here in the texture and these crisscrossing lines like this grid, like this little intersection right here. Well, if I hold option and click right next to the number, I let go of my mouse, let go of the option key. Now I line up the grid again. But when I paint, I'm just going to end up bumping the number somewhere else. And now I've got twice as much damage. Okay, so I'm going to go to edit and undo. As you are cloning, you have to look down below. Let me show you on the dark area here. If I option click right here, keep your eye up here. Okay. When I go to paint down below, you will see a plus following my cursor. Everywhere that plus goes, it's picking up that green right there. It's going to hit the edge of his shoulder and recreate another shoulder edge right there. Everywhere the plus goes, it is repainting the pixels in the circle below. So you got to be aware of that distant relationship there. Okay, I'm going to go to edit, undo, and then I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. And what you want to do for cloning is little bits at a time. I always tell my students, if somebody can tell that you were photo retouching a photo, then you're not doing it right. Okay, you want people to believe there was never a date there to begin with. So you got to do it real precisely. And that means you take your time. Okay, I'm going to option click. Let's make my brush a little bit smaller. Follow this line. I'm going to option click right there. Now I let go of the mouse and the option key. I'll move that line up, kind of line it up with my grid right there. And then I'm going to paint in the bottom half of the five only. Because I'm looking down below at that plus. And if that plus is starting to get up near where the bottom of the five started, that means I'm getting into danger territory. So I'm just going to stop. Okay, now I can go above. Option click up there. Paint a little bit down below. Option click down below. Paint up above. And I take out the five. Right there. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more. Option click down below. Line up the texture. Let's see. Option click. Let's line it up right there. Do the bottom half of the number zero. I'm going to option click down below and keep doing the bottom halves of these numbers first. Option click down below, paint above. Let's take out a little chunk of that so far. That's looking pretty good. Option click above, paint down below. Option click below. Let's paint a little bit above. Option click above, paint down below. 
And notice how I'm jumping around in this photo, constantly jumping around in the photo because I want to mix up my pixels. Option click above, paint down below right there. Option click below, paint back above. That's looking pretty clean right there. Okay, and I'm going to keep going. Maybe a smaller brush because we don't have a lot of space here. Option click, and then we'll line that up and paint a little bit right there. Option click above, paint down below. Option click the edge of the sleeve, paint more edge right there. Option click above, paint down below. That's looking good. Uh, let's see, option click below, paint up above. Option click to the left, paint over to the right. Oops, I went too far. There we go. Didn't listen to my own advice. Uh, okay, option click on the left, paint over to the right. Just a little bit right there. There we go. Option click the left, paint over to the right. Just a little bit more. Option click, move and paint. Option click above. And let's paint down below right there. Option click on the right, paint over to the left. And again, I'm just jumping around here. Okay, so let's go down here. Option click above, paint that edge down below. Option click on the right, paint over to the left. Option click above, paint down below. It's looking pretty clean. It's looking great, believable. Option click above, paint down below. Option click the shadow, repaint that shadow. That's looking good. Uh, let's see, let's move around here. Option click below, paint back up here. Option click above and then come back down below. That looks good. Option click and paint. Option click and paint a little bit. Option click the highlight, paint more highlight. There we go. Option click below, paint up into this little angle right here. Option click above, paint down below. Option click above, paint down below. Option click below, paint back up. All right, so there we go. Nobody would ever know there was a date there to begin with because I cloned it out like a pro. Okay, so here's my final photo. Cleaner skin tones, no more scars, took out the date, lightened up the face. There's all my directions. I've done them so I can throw them away. And you're going to save this as a JPEG. Just call it adjustments or tonal adjustments last name first name tonal adjustments and that's a little more introduction to clone stamping here in photoshop